Good morning. Just in case I forget to mention, yesterday we had a group of people from California, Southern California, with a pastor who's a good friend. And then we had a group from Indonesia, who actually had lunch here. The Californians were probably about 50 people. The Indonesians, I don't know exactly, I didn't count them, but I would say at least 30-ish. And they're one country that has continually come here since October. And that's pretty interesting and encouraging. Interesting, the pattern of waves there, the light. So I imagine you can tell where I am, just up here on the balcony of our house, our little house, the White House, up on the second floor. Maybe one of the words today is, at some point in life, we need to take a stand. But obviously the stand has to be, we would like to take it in the truth. And we'd like to take it in goodness. <laughs> because if we take a stand with a lot of conviction in a falsehood, <laughs> which it will prove to be, then that would be a huge mistake. Take a stand in the truth. To stand, to stand tall in the truth. Really tall. and stand strong in goodness. Like, it's not going to be easy to move this mountain, no matter how tough the storms are. Today, the gospel reports people who are taking different positions in front of, of Jesus. And they're disputing if he's from Galilee or not. We're here in Galilee at the moment, at the Sea of Galilee. Doesn't he have to be the son of David? Doesn't he have to come from Bethlehem? Sometimes some details are not clear to us in life. But there's our, our whole person processing. I wonder if I can catch this guy for you. Oops, he's just gone away. There's a bee that was dancing here just about three feet away. 
fixed in one spot and as soon as I got the slightest bit in his direction he's gone. Some say he's the prophet, some say he's the Christ. And a division occurred among them. And somebody does take a stand, and this is Nicodemus. And Nicodemus rises above this question about uh, Bethlehem in this moment and he asks a legal question does our law allow us to condemn somebody before addressing him speaking with him talking with him having a direct encounter that's a very interesting position of Nicodemus and apparently it took quite some courage because there's real hostility that wants to neutralize Jesus, just to take him out, eliminate him. Language that's used in our days. And he came before at nighttime with Jesus, but he is growing. And sometimes we have to take positions and hopefully always in truth and in goodness and this helps our growth. It helps us to be defined. And sometimes it's a sharp edge and it's a difference with others. And we see this cliff up here in Mount Arbel. Let me see if I can get the, this cliff in focus for you. Without the camera dancing around everywhere. It's a very defined cliff there between those two trees. You can see the huge cave and the bushes. Sometimes we allow passions of envy, of hardness of heart, lack of compassion, and we label people, and labels kind of allow us to shirk the responsibility of doing the more deeper discernment and encounter with the person. And Jeremiah puts it also in very, very, very remarkable, dramatic words. And he says, like a sheep led to the slaughter. I, like a trusting lamb led to the slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. And this was made known to him by the Lord. The Lord can want us to endure a stand, uh, uh, taking a position of identity of who we are, despite the hostility and machinations of people with enormous hostility. And this isn't just something from the history books. This, is ha this happens today. They behave in hostile ways toward us. But we want to have a heart like Jesus, a heart of compassion and a heart that's redemptive. 
that's not condemning. That's praying for those who oppose us. There's something marvelous about that image of the lamb. There's also this very other strong counter image of the lion. But the strength of the person of God is not for destruction of others. The strength of the person of God is for redemption of others. And this is a word we continue to use in the liturgy to this day, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And that raises a whole question as well about our participation in that dimension of life. Sometimes parents have to bear the burden of the, of the bad things their children do. And they have to bear a very heavy burden. But that can also be a providential way that the Lord reveals to them how they can participate in the recovery of their child. And this seems to be the model of reality for humanity. All of humanity is what God does. And he's the ultimate parent. He creates every one of us. And his love is so extensive, so divine. To be a person of divine love This is our great calling. We are divinized, made divine. Imagine God living in us, his temple. We are a divine temple. Imagine that the Holy Spirit cries out in us, Lord, Lord, and without that we couldn't say Jesus, Lord. So when we say Jesus, Lord, that's not something just a human statement. That's because of a powerful grace. So that means our thoughts and our public confession of faith is also divine. It shares in divine inspiration. And then the total self-giving of sacrificial love for the redemption of others, that's nothing more divine. And Nicodemus gets the heat for that as well. He's already starting to bear it because they're mocking him, recognizing he's standing as a member of the Sanhedrin, but he's taking a stand. And when we take stands, it's not because we have an incredible strength of our own. And all the martyrs do that. There's, in fact, a, a beautiful prayer in the liturgy of the church when we remember martyrs. And it, it goes something like this, just improvising it. It says, uh, your strength is revealed in our weakness. So it's a divine strength. And that's expressed in the psalm here, Psalm 7. And the responsorial verse that's repeated is verse 2, the beginning of verse 2. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. So this means that it's not about my strength, it's the strength I have in this refuge, the protection I have, I'm covered, I'm shielded. I will have to take a lot of negativity. Maybe a child is very hurtful in their comments or a spouse. Maybe there can be grave tension and words uttered that really everybody regrets later. But in the meantime, the one party is able to remain calm and not break the relationship precisely because of that interior strength that comes from God. That our way of operating and our strength to operate is originating from God himself. And we have that beautiful chapter 15 of, of John's Gospel where I am the vine and you are the branches and without me you can do nothing. 
It's not like about driving a tractor or a bus or lifting a hundred pounds without me you can do nothing. It's about heavy lifting and love. Precisely it's that capacity to have such incredible development of love in our hearts. That we can lay down our lives and so many have, so many do without anybody noticing, only God. Maybe that's the best way. God bless you today. Have a wonderful day. I'm happy we have these different nooks to be able to keep live streaming without having the resolve the data issue yet. But we'll get that resolved eventually, God willing. At least we'll have to discover what's the real cause. Have a beautiful day. May the Lord bless you always.